Batman issue 96 heads years into the future, where on the sunny streets of Gotham, a boy has sent the bat signal, prompting him to step away from the sidewalk as Mr. Freeze and Son's van rockets past, with the silver armoured Batman giving chase, contacting Victor and telling him to surrender so no one gets hurt. Victor stops the van, saying his sons were born in a darker, colder Gotham, and they remember the endless nights and crimes and horror, so they will tear down this false utopia Batman has built and make something far more chilling. Snow Cone says that he wants to freeze Batman Batman's brain for an experiment, but Victor says that they will remind Batman first of what he is dealing with. The freezers blast Batman, freezing his bat cycle, but Alfred activates the heat array, shattering the ice and allowing Batman to take down the three freezers with stun batarangs, promising Victor all will be okay. Heading to the Batcave, Bruce meets with Alfred, telling him that he needs to meet with Barbara in order to figure out how Freeze escaped, as well as who the two boys are that call themselves his sons. Alfred says that he was worried there for a moment since the trip he and Miss Wayne have scheduled for Tokyo could have been cancelled, but Bruce knows Selina would have killed him if they missed their trip, and the city is well in hand. Alfred calls the city his little Gotham, but Bruce knows it's not so little when you're racing around it at 100 miles per hour. Bruce asks if there's any more surprises, and Alfred says that Tim brought Connor to dinner, having a proposal for Bruce, which he knows will be expensive, since he's still paying off the last Titan's Tower. Suddenly, Alfred's neck snaps, his drooping head saying that Bruce will die alone as it turns into the Joker, saying the city will fall into his hands. Bruce awakens from his dream in the care of Harley Quinn, who has been betting with herself whether he'd survive or not. Bruce knows Selina said that Harley was badly hurt, but Harley says that she got hurt a bunch, but her mouth is not easy to shut up. Harley knows her scar is a little Frankenstein's monster, but she's going to lean into it, maybe even paint herself green. She asks where Catwoman is, and Batman learns that he's been out for three days, in which time Batman Batman was blamed for blowing up part of Wayne Enterprises. Harley reveals that Gotham is Joker's city now, and his men are running rampant, along with all the other gangs Joker is paying to tear up the town with the new Wayne Tech toys he now has access to. At night, the real horror starts as the gangs begin murdering people, but as a clown goes to kill some people, he himself is killed by a man using a batarang taped to a baseball bat. The woman asks if he's okay, but he tells the woman he's far from it, but will kill a bunch of the clowns until he feels better. Harley tells Batman he's still dosed with the poison Punchline gave him, but Batman wants to know where Joker is. She says that Punchline is running all of the gangs from the Wayne building in the Tri-Corner Yards, and rumour is that Joker brought the Ace Chemicals, and they are making a new Joker toxin there as the Underbroker and his army of lawyers paralyse the city's politics, and the cops are staying out of it all. She, however, knows Joker is prepping something different, since he's bought all ad time in Gotham and making online videos and TV, running the same ad over over and over. She shows Batman the advertisement, which depicts the former owner of the Monarch tied up, telling everyone to come to the theatre to see the Mark of Zorro, offering $10,000 to anyone who comes opening night. After he finishes, Joker shoots him in the head, ending the ad. Batman begins seeing flashes of the Monarch and his parents, who like Alfred before him, have their necks snapped as they turn into the Joker, laughing at him. Harley snaps him out of it, telling him he's gotta get his head straight since Joker will kill him if he goes crazy. Batman pushes her again, as as the voice of Alfred warns him of Harley's tranquilizer syringe. Harley knows that he's hearing voices as Batman escapes her grip, heading into the sewers. Later, Batman emerges near the Monarch Theatre, telling Alfred that he's a little dizzy since he's obviously having a psychotic break, and he knows the voice isn't real. Alfred says he's hurt by that since he's very real and promised to always help Bruce. Heading to a roof, Batman quiets Alfred as he takes out a group of Joker thugs, knowing that he will need to deal with this all over the city but first, he's going to deal with the Joker. Heading to the revamped Monarch Theatre, Bruce says that while it doesn't look new, it's like exactly how it was the night his parents died, with Alfred saying Joker's trying to get under his skin. Batman knows it's working, and he doesn't know if the theatre is actually like this now, or it's the toxins making him see this. Heading into the theatre, he sees and smells the dead people in the seats, not finding a heartbeat on any of them. Joker appears on the screen, saying that all these people are their family, and that they are people he's helped to see the other side of the veil, and it's every man, woman, and child he has killed over the years. He says he's had his men digging for days to bring all of the bodies there, and he's given them a bit of a tech upgrade thanks to the designer to make them all alive again, making them an army of Joe Chills. The corpses all come alive with the green gas, as Joker says that all of these people have a bone to pick with Batman, since he should have been there to save them. The zombies all get up, advancing on Batman as Joker's endless laugh echoes through 
through the haunted theater. Batman issue 96 was a damn good continuation of Joker War, giving us some really fun glimpses at a possible future Bruce could have, as well as the sobering reality that is Gotham right now. I really love how Tynan is playing with the idea that maybe everything Batman is seeing and that is happening is a hallucination, and is just Joker playing, well, a joke on him. Or it's all real, including Alfred's voice, which makes me feel like that's where it's actually headed with the reveal that everything was a hallucination except for Alfred's voice, whereas that was real all along, and that's how they sort of bring Alfred back to life. I love the idea of Joker's army of Joe Chills and how they are literally all his victims, right from all through his history, all weaponized to battle the man that couldn't save them. It's a brilliant bit of writing, and I can't wait to see the story continue next issue. I'm going to give this issue a 9 out of 10. Issue